absolutely fascinating to me how the folks on the left side of this dais have, are calling these things conspiracy theories when just through the Missouri v. Biden case, you're, there is a treasure trove of actual evidence in a court proceeding, witness testimony, factual evidence that, that shows that all of this has been happening under the Biden administration and that there is true censorship from this White House into the American people. Mr. Schellenberger, I wanna start with you. On November 2nd, 2023, you posted an article on your Substack uh, entitled, FBI and DHS Directors Mislead Congress About Censorship. In the post, you detail Senator Paul's recent questioning of DS DHS Secretary Mayorkas and FBI Director Ray regarding their respective department's censorship activities. Notably, Secretary Mayorkas and Director Ray both testified that their agency personnel complied with the law and did not violate First Amendment rights by targeting constitutionally protected speech on social media platforms. Given what we have learned in recent months from the Missouri v. Biden case and your investigative reporting shining the light on the Cyber Threat Intelligence League, is it fair to say that Secretary Mayorkas and Director Ray lied to Congress when they told Senator Paul that their agency personnel did not target constitutionally protected speech? Yeah, I mean, I think it's fair to say that they misled Congress. Um, I'm, I can't be sure of their intention, but they're wrong that those agencies weren't involved in uh, in demanding censorship by the social media platforms. And, and just briefly, like, how, how, how were they involved in censoring speech? Well, FBI, I don't want to read your whole article, just... Oh, sure. I mean, FBI agents were directly flagging content to Twitter saying, this appears to violate your terms of service. What about this? What about that? Same thing with... DHS staff, and then of course DHS created uh, the Election uh, Integrity Partnership, which then became the Virality Project, which was in the process of dem demanding mass censorship of Americans. And based on them reaching out, a lot of these social media companies then acted on that, like the Hunter Biden laptop, all these different activities, correct? Yeah, absolutely. And you have to remember the context is that this was at a time when the social media companies were being threatened to lose their ability to operate, which is the Section 230. One of the most dramatic instances, which is in the Facebook files, is where the White House is, say, is demanding that Facebook censor content that they think could lead to people becoming hesitant to take the vaccine. Facebook responded and said that they were removing often true content of vaccine side effects. Your piece also notes that Director Ray acknowledged that the FBI has been forced to alter its coordination with social media companies to comply with the injunction issued by the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals in Missouri v. Biden. Right. Would you agree that this is an acknowledgement that the FBI's prior censorship conduct does in fact violate the First Amendment rights of Americans? Absolutely. Mr. Chairman, I'd ask unanimous consent to enter into the record Mr. Schellenberger's sub-stack sub post from November 2nd, 2023. Uh, unless Congress acts, will there be any consequences for these government officials who have actively supported censorship of certain viewpoints on social media? We all hope that the Supreme Court rules uh, against these kinds of activities consistent with its past precedents that you, the government cannot appoint somebody else to, to violate the law, and that, which is what was going on here. But I don't think we can rely on the Supreme Court. I do think Congress should establish through Section 230 reform uh, the requirement that we, the people, are allowed to moderate our own content by choosing our own filters. Um, and that it should not be up to uh, the big tech platforms. And if you don't want to have Section 230, then you can just be a publisher like Matt and I are or the New York Times is. Well, and I've worked on Section 230 legislation. The chairman is, is working on that, and I think that's something that absolutely has to happen this Congress so that people get their freedom and their First Amendment rights back. Uh, it's clear to me that Congress must act and hold these government officials accountable. The censorship industrial complex, as uh, you put it, and Mr. Taibbi have dubbed it, is an existential threat to our First Amendment freedoms. Unless we come together to impose transparency and accountability measures to prevent the government from engaging in such behavior, this, uh, uh, this activity will unfortunately continue. I'm proud to be a co-sponsor of the Chairman Jordan's Free Speech Protection Act that he sponsored in partnership with Senator Paul. This legislation is needed to ensure that government officials face significant consequences for engaging engaging in the censorship and suppression of speech protected by our Constitution. Further, we must enact transparency measures so that officials cannot hide behind public-private partnerships in order to skirt around their legal obligations. Sadly, we cannot trust many federal officials to adhere to their oath they took to uphold and defend the Constitution, and it's up to Congress to ensure our First Amendment rights are protected. In the remaining time I have, Mr. Tybee, if you could just comment uh, on what you weren't able to respond to from Mrs. Washerman Schultz. It's, well, first of all, just for the record, I've said on many occasions that uh, I'm not a free speech absolutist. Uh, in fact, no journalist is or can be. We all operate under very uh, 
serious restrictions involving libel, defamation, incitement. Uh, we have to navigate each one of those rules every time we publish anything. Uh, and then we always look uh, fondly uh, on that process because we believe those rules protect us. Uh, so we're not free speech absolutists. We're just uh, in, not in favor of government censorship. Uh, that's the issue here. There's, there's, a, there's a profound difference between um, litigating something like libel or defamation and having a, an unelected, unaccountable, um, uh, in, unseen uh, committee uh, remove your content without any due process. That, that's what we're talking about. Time to, I yield back. Thank you for being here. Uh, time of the gentleman's fired. Uh, gentleman yields back. Gentleman from Texas is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and 